Hi guys, this is Derek Six Peppers Haney, founder of Open Face Solutions, uh, here to bring you another video. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to input hands into the tactics trainer and view their results, and then we will also go through the tactics trainer and play some hands and talk about some strategy. So first off, I've logged in and I'm on my user dashboard in a paid account. So I have the ability, uh, only paid accounts currently have the ability to input hands, but we will be changing that in the future so that all accounts have trials to input hands temporarily and then must be converted to paid accounts. So we've got two options, the hand input text only or the hand input. Um, the text only is my favorite, especially if you're trying to do a lot of hands at the same time. Uh, so I'll show you what this looks like. We bring a hand in over here and we're going to just input the information on the board. So I'm actually going to have to let's see, shrink this down a little so we can look at it at the same time. So six of spades, ace of diamonds, and tab over to the next line. Nine of diamonds, four of hearts, five of the clubs, four of clubs, tab over to the next line. King of clubs, king of diamonds, two of spades, and tab down. Place the ace of spades, queen of spades, and ten of diamonds. Now we also have dead cards here that I've taken with my screenshot. And by the way, I highly recommend you take screenshots of your tough situations. So here we know we have the ten of hearts and three of diamonds, three of clubs as dead cards. And we'll tab down to look at our opponent's hand. Jack of diamonds on the top. Seven of spades, four of diamonds, ace of hearts, ace of clubs, eight of spades. Then we tab down, king of hearts, nine of hearts. Eight of hearts, five of hearts, seven of hearts. So this is what, uh, you know, this is our translation of the hand. In the future, we may be able to pull these hands in automatically through a integrating with uh, specific app developers and making that process a lot easier for you. But right now, hand input is the only way to go if you have a tough question on the site. Um, so we submit this to the tactics trainer. If the hand hasn't been submitted pr uh, prior to this, It'll tell us that we've accepted it. And if you're wondering, maybe in this instance, what, what this hand might look like without the dead cards, we can delete the dead cards here and submit it again. And that is a different situation, so it'll see it accepted as another hand. So after we've submitted that hand, we can then go back to our dashboard, back to our My Hands. And these are all the hands that I've input from this account. You can see there's a lot of them. This is the account I usually input hands from. And we can open up that hand and take a look. So this hand was uh, took this many simulations, so very simple calculation relative to most of them. And we have our answer. Uh, should we gamble for Fantasyland? The answer is yes, ace in the front, queen in back. Uh, is the best play with ace in front, 10 in back being the uh, second best play because the 10 is dead. And uh, putting queen in front, 10 in back would be worse by a little bit over a point. So now we know that this is a fantasy land gamble situation. And if we just to learn a little bit from it, um, we can see that in the middle we have uh, one four alive, two fives, and two nines. So basically we have four outs in the middle because the four is a kind of a runner runner. We have to hit a running king two four in order to hit it. So I like to think we have four outs in the middle and then in the back we're gonna have one king, three twos, and with the queen in the back that'd be three queens. One plus three plus one, uh, one plus three plus three is seven. So we have seven outs to four outs. So a seven out to a four outer when we are behind our opponent uh, by by one point basically here, we're always losing the back and we're losing in the middle right now, even we could lose in the front. So we're pretty far behind. This is uh, this would be a clear spot to gamble and, and hope for the best. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look at, so, so another important thing here is that even with the 10 dead, with the extra 10 dead down here, we know that we should still gamble with only two live outs back here. So a six outer to a four outer would still be um, a, a gamble. And I think that's really interesting to me because uh, I don't think I gamble in spots like that nearly as often as, as I should according to the simulator. 
So that is looking at this hand from the uh, submitting by text. So let's go ahead and submit another hand by uh, manually. So here's another spot that we've played versus someone. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink the screen. Actually, I'm gonna have to move this a little bit off screen, I think, to fit it a little bit better. Here we go. So we're gonna, let's go ahead and start with uh, our opponent's board since we have clubs up already. We'll put their flush in the back here. Ace, two, six. And it doesn't matter what uh, order you put it in, you know, I could swap the, uh, the nine and the two like this and it would still count those two as the same thing. So it doesn't really matter the order you place the cards. It will store it in that order, and that can matter if you're trying to, for instance, portray what your first setting, your first five setting was, but that's pretty much irrelevant. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. And since we've still got clubs open, we'll put our two draw cards down here, queen of clubs and four of clubs. Now we'll move on to hearts. So we've got the ace of hearts in the middle, eight of hearts in the back, and so it doesn't matter. Uh, how we kind of go about doing this. Ace of spades, jack of spades, ten of spades, and you can see I forgot the jack of hearts, no big deal, we'll bring it back over here. And as we slide all the cards onto the board, now we're down to just diamonds. Put the queen of diamonds in our draw hand, ace of diamonds up here, seven of diamonds up here. So we've got six cards missing on our board and four on theirs so this is actually called a sixth street calculation uh the way that the way that i call it a sixth street because this is the sixth decision point in the hand um, and so i think the board looks good and i don't think we have any dead cards uh to mention so we'll submit this to the tactics trainer now yeah you can see the the problem with this hand is should we put two pair in the back or put queens up top and it is really an interesting problem. So we'll see what the simulator, the simulator says. We could also, while we're here, toy around with it. We can uh, give ourselves another live eight and see if that changes the solution. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, then we'll change it back and we'll maybe we'll go the other way. Now we'll uh, we'll get, we'll take out another uh, four as an out and we'll submit it that way. So we've taken out that red card and submitted it again. So even though it's just one hand, I'm able to pull up, you know, some interesting information about it and uh, and see what the results are around that. Now for a six street hand, it's gonna take a little bit of time for this simulation to complete. So I'll go ahead and pause the video for about an hour while this runs and we'll come back to it in just a second. All right, that only took about 18 minutes to run the three simulations. We can go over to my hands and look at it. And on that note, let's take a look at a little chart I made to uh, expect how long each hand is going to take. And I'll give you kind of a breakdown of how that works right now. So anything um, 8th and 9th Street, so right near the end with 20 cards on the board or more, it's going to just be pretty much instant. Uh, by the time you get to look at the hand, it should be done. On 7th Street, it could take up to 10 minutes, but usually it'll take around 1. So it should be pretty fast with 7th Street as well. Six, it starts to get highly variable, and this just has to do with the combinatorical nature of the game um, and how we simplify things, so it depends on the layout of the board in some senses. Could take anywhere from three minutes to three hours, but it's really always going to be right around like the 10 minute mark. So, and we'll, we'll be working to create an email system where you can check a box and get an email uh, when your hand has finished through the simulator and you can view the results. Anything on Fifth Street, um, basically, hands are we're accepting submissions right now, but they are not going to finish anytime soon. We've actually got a huge backlog of hands, and each hand can take between two and ten days, um, and it could even be up to fourteen days. We've we haven't even been able to test enough hands to know for sure if it'll go longer than ten at some situations. So um, with that length of time currently with the simulator, it, that means that more hands are being submitted than are being finished. So uh, right now we've got 51 Street 5 hands queued up. So with a, if we don't open another server, it would take till the end of the year probably in order for that to get done. 
but we will be opening more servers and finishing up those hands um, in faster as we kind of get more traffic to the site. So the problem is uh, is only temporary, but we will. Uh, but you should expect severe delays right now on Street Five, and moving forward, it will be uh, a lot faster uh, as we kind of look to resolve that issue. So let's go ahead and take a look at these hands that we submitted. All right, so we'll open up the first hand, the original, and look at the results. So we've got queen front, four back. So uh, this tells us that we do, in fact, want to put the two pair in the back and get out of foul territory before we gamble. And with queen, queen front, you can see the difference is only uh, 0.6 of a point. So it's not a huge difference, but and if you value Fantasyland higher, you know I still actually think valuing Fantasyland higher would still favor the back because you can't. I mean, Fantasyland is not worth ten points. It could be worth eight, eight to eight and a half, but it would not up the calculation by an entire point. It would be a fraction of a point. So I don't think you could ever uh, run the simulation even with a greedy kind of Fantasyland. Um, to uh, it, saying that Fantasyland was worth more and expect Queen Queen Front to be better. So let's go ahead and uh, see what happens if we give ourselves one more live out. So I think that would be a really interesting. I have to imagine it does change with just one more live out. So here, yeah, we see that it's about the same uh, point value between the two. So really, this is clearly an indifference play. So with all of the other uh, cards live on the bottom, we can gamble or not gamble. And it looks like gambling is slightly uh, more plus EV. So um, I think that it'd be a clear gamble here. So we know already um, with one dead eight that it's not going to be a gamble so with two i have to imagine it's clearly not a gamble and here the point difference where we have an eight dead and a four dead is uh one and a half one about one and a half points so we can see that it is clearly not a gamble at that point so that's it for the hands we submitted and learn from let's go ahead and dive into the tactics trainer all right, so let's go ahead and dive into some fresh tactics and see if we can't learn a thing or two from our tactics trainer. Here's a new hand, so I've never seen any of these hands before. Uh, I might have submitted some of them, and so uh, I may be familiar with them, but I don't think I'll, I'll know any answers just straight away. So this is asking if we should put the five here to beat the king-queen high. And, uh, and then I suppose we'd put something like the two in the, well, the two, two dead here. With the eight, there's one dead, and the five has one dead. So we would do something like this, or would we put like the five in the middle and leave that open for Fantasyland? I'm gonna go with open for Fantasyland, um, as I think that that is slightly better. So we'll submit it. And you can see that we are correct, and putting the five up front is a mistake of really only a tenth of a point so a little over a tenth of a point not a huge deal but still uh it's it's worth it i think for the fantasy land gamble um and and it is a maybe a little bit more of a nuanced play that people might be locking it up a little too early um and it's worth worth investigating this could if it was sixes i mean for sure the one royalty point would change it would sway it over but with fives, um, and if it was a yeah, some, it's just a, it, it's just a close spot. It's all. So here's a six street situation, where we've got uh, nines. We can put the queen up top, or we can put probably nines in the back or nines in the middle. So I've toyed around with spots like this, and I think it's actually just better to lock up the nines and hope for running ace king in the next two draws. Doing this is okay since we're we beat now sixes and uh, a pair of sixes or a pair of fours if they make that, uh, but it, I don't I don't think that uh, top is good though top is definitely not good. Um, middle could be correct so let's see what, what it says here so we got it right, and uh, the next best play is actually putting the queen front and the nine in the middle and yeah that makes perfect sense because then you can still hit ace king and you leave this open for. For making like a full house or something on the bottom. Um, let's see, putting nine nine in the middle. 
Let's find out where that, where is that one? Nine middle, nine middle, nine front, nine middle, did we miss it? Nine middle, nine middle is all the way down here. So this would be, putting nines in the middle would actually be one of the worst plays. Um, it's even worse than putting nines up front. That's very surprising. So nine middle, nine middle, nine front, nine front are significantly worse than nine back, nine back. I think uh, not, not too complicated of a situation, even though it took uh, this many simulations to figure it out. So right away here, this is a Fantasyland Gamble question. And we can consider putting the king up top. We want to count our outs. We could also be looking at a situation where we want to do this. This is also a viable thing because then we can hit five queen, five king, three king, three queen. Uh, oh, no, there's all, no queens are live. So there's only one king left. So that's actually going to happen very infrequently, I suppose. Uh, but it does stop us from getting scooped. So what I like to do here is count. Uh, Let's start by counting diamonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight diamonds. So 13 minus eight means that there's five diamonds left. Uh, so if we put this here, we have five outs to a flush uh, and we cannot beat their flush. It's kind of important to, to note. And then we also, uh, in the middle, we'll have one, two, three, uh, sorry, one, two, three, uh, two threes live, two sixes. So it's four, five, six outs. So we would have five outs to six outs uh, to, to hit here. I think that is enough to make this a worthwhile gamble, especially because all of our outs uh, are, we, we should consider live. Um, and we, having two nines in the deck actually removes chances of, of us missing. Uh, so dead cards are relevant even when they're not relevant because it increases the chances of hitting. So, I think uh, I think this is a close spot, but probably a gamble. Uh, it looks like no. So what it wants us to do? Uh, this is I made a mistake of one tenth of a point, just over a tenth of a point. So it's a close spot. Uh, if you value fantasy land higher than seven point five points, you may want to play four fantasy land here. And it, yeah, it, it prefers the two pair back, which I think is really interesting because you could also just do something like this uh you know or even put or this i think would actually be the best thing to do and, and this you know looks pretty good because you leave the flush opportunity there to get those royalties uh provided that they win and, or lose really um so so it's really funny that uh that it, it wants you to play it completely safe just so that you scoop them whenever they miss and that's all you're doing here is you're locking in six points the uh the X percentage of times that they uh, that they don't hit the ace. So if we, we can actually take a look at how often that happens, let me pull this. So what we've got here is we're on 8th Street and they have two outs left. So uh, based on this, this the information we have right now, they have a 21% chance of hitting the ace. So we lock up six points, 80% uh, of the time basically. By putting king seven back whereas the rest uh the other way we can we can foul ourselves and uh we only hit the flush uh we have that's five outs right so we only hit the flush um you know bring it all the way in that's 47 percent of the time so we we foul or we miss the flush half the time and then what we can hit our seven king uh seven or king but there's uh, not that many of those left either. So we do foul a bit uh, with our with our strategy, and that's why this play is the best, I suppose. Let's take a look at one more spot. So here, it looks like the question is, should we put trips in the middle and the ace up top, given that we've got four completely live outs on the bottom, and this sets us up really nicely for some sort of fantasy land hit. So what we're looking at now is a, a odds calculation of we hit four uh, four outs this percentage of the time right thirty nine percent so forty percent we can just say uh, so forty percent of the time we will hit here and then of that forty percent how often will we make fantasy land well 
you can see that it turns out all the aces are dead in this exact case and we've only got two queens to hit um, now this is not actually representative of a two adder because that um, a two adder two five, uh, four adder so let's see a four adder to two adder will actually only happen six percent of the time so we would only make fantasy land six percent of the time here and we'll foul 60 percent of the time that doesn't sound so good so i think we put the ace up top and we're gonna have to put the seven up top as well so that we can leave the middle open to try and hit two pair to be aces and we'll leave the bottom of it for fantasy land this has got to be right and looks good so um putting the seven in the middle uh and we it actually wants you to put the six in the front which is, uh, if you're going to leave the front open, it's better to, I guess, draw out the royalties than have an ace, ace high to beat them. That's really interesting. So that, that is kind of another little nuance that might apply in other situations. So we put the seven middle uh, six front would be a mistake of about a point. All right, that's all the I'm going to do for you right now on the tactics trainer. I hope you enjoyed this session. Um, you know, after your session, you can always go back to your home screen and take a look at your score. You've got your uh, your lifetime average score here and your lifetime average correct percent. And we will have a rating system pretty soon. Uh, and it tells you how many quiz hands you've taken. Uh, I hope that was helpful. This is Derek Six Peppers Haney for OpenFaceSolutions.com.